Okay, so I wanted to do this video and it's not the sort of video I usually do. And I'm not really an expert with this sort of retro video game stuff, but I wanted to make a video because a lot of this information is kind of lost on the internet. A lot of the images don't work. A lot of the guides are very vague and they don't have the best pictures. So I wanted to make a nice video to cover this for anybody that actually wants to do this. So what we're basically doing is improving the video out on the Genesis as well as cleaning up the audio because the PCB the Genesis uses is quite bad. It's very noisy. So this is a first gen Genesis. So it's the big one. This is most beneficial with the smaller Genesis. So the series two and series three Genesis just because the audio amps they use is very bad and the PCB is also pretty noisy. But this also helps with the first gen ones. This is actually a Japanese Genesis, but this, the board revisions don't matter too terribly and it's, it's kind of irrelevant as long as you have the same chips on the board. And the second gen Genesis's are much easier to actually do this with. So here is the little PCB we're gonna be using and I'll put a link down below for all of these schematics I used, where I bought this from, all the information, the pinouts, the diagrams that I used, because really this isn't my own work. This is a collection of other people's works in a better format. So what this board is here is basically a audio amp and a video out, I guess. So basically all we're doing is we're taking the video signal and we're putting it out here and it's going to be corrected for the, the resistances that we need for the video out. So basically we're going to take all these pins here. So most of these are actually sound. And these last five here are your S video, C sync and a five volt. And we're going to ground it up here. And that's all we're really going to do this. These pins correspond to the, the video out on the console. So we're just going to wire these to the corresponding pins to the Genesis. And that's basically the, the concept of how this works. So you're basically bypassing the entire PCB. This is a series one Genesis. So all we have going on here is some wires soldered on to the other side of the connector. So the bottom side of the PCB where these connectors are connected. So all we've done is isolate RGB and C-Sync, which are going to be red, blue, Purple here is actually our green cable. Yellow is our C-Sync cable. And since we're gonna be using the audio portion of this board that we're using, this is our audio. Now these, this Genesis here, the first gen Genesis only has mono. So there is modifications to actually pipe in stereo. And basically it modifies the headphone jack and reroutes the cables to this connector. I'm not gonna really be covering that because that's kind of very well covered in guides that are already online. So I'm just gonna be using this here from mono. Now these cables are your out and these cables will be connecting plug here, the other side of this plug, and we're gonna be connecting them to these pins here. And I have pinouts down below if you wanna take a look. I'll also put them in the video because these pinouts here are actually different than these pinouts. So you can't just put it on top and wire them one to one. You have to actually change around the wiring so I'm gonna put that on screen now so you guys can take a look at it. Now this is also where second gen Genesis are better to do this with because literally all you do, get rid of these wires, put down some electrical tape right here, or you can even put it on the back side of this board. All you would do is set it down. The back side of this connector is flush with these pins here and literally all you do is fill it with solder. It, it's really that easy and you don't even have to use a five volt rail. And I'll actually link that down in the video description. I found a tweet from the manufacturers of that this chip saying this was specifically designed for the second gen Genesis to do exactly that. So I will put that tweet in the description. You guys can check it out. It's so much simpler than this, but this is a first gen Genesis, so you can't do that. So now that we have our wires here, we're gonna flip the board over and I'm gonna show you what else to do. This is our video encoder chip. It says Sega. 7101 and this is where some guides online are actually pretty good so if you can't see the pinouts very well here you can definitely go online 
the Google and see which pins you have to actually lift up. So basically what we want to do is there's three pins here. I have some hot glue on it. It's ugly, but it's there to keep it there for demonstration. So, but basically we got three pins on this side. You got to lift them up, put these wires on them. So these are your RGB. You have one pin on the other side. No, you don't actually have to lift this one up. This is your C-Sync. You can literally just tack a wire to that pin. Additionally, you see where these dots are here? I don't know if the camera catches that, but there's these two solder points that I put here. And you actually have to scrape the board and put a couple solder dots there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a capacitor here, and then you're gonna come over here. You're gonna put a cap between this pin here where this dot is and the dot. The dot is ground, so you're gonna have to scrape that. I haven't done it yet. You're gonna have to scrape that, expose it, solder, put the cap between that one and that pin there. Now some guides online, because this is a Japanese Genesis, a lot of guides online use like a US Genesis. So I've actually looked at the PCB for the US Genesis and the vias, that is these little tiny holes, are placed differently. Just be aware that your vias might be in a different spot. So you might either have to use a wire or a cap with long legs. Ideally, you wanna use like an SMD cap just because you can just set it there. It doesn't change the profile of the board, but you don't necessarily have to. Okay, so the second thing you wanna do is with this chip here, the CXA1145. Basically, RGB is going to run into this chip. That is your video signal. And it's going to output composite. And it's going to output RGB. It's going to collect the audio from down here. And basically, a lot of these legs are inputs. A lot of them are outputs. The outputs actually go to this plug here. So that's your, your S-Video, your, your DIN connector. So if we're connecting these wires here, we can't have this. We can't, we can't have these two connected to each other. It's gonna create interference, the signals are gonna get mixed, and it's basically going to ruin the whole point of this entire modification. So, what you need to do, you can do this multiple ways. I chose to cut the legs. I cut RGB legs right here. In the description, I have a schematic from a website I found on this chip here. It has the exact same pinout, it's all good. All you got to do is make sure before you cut the legs or permanently modify this chip like I did is make sure that you have the right pins because this chip could be turned around, could be oriented different. So make sure you do a continuity test between this connector here and this chip because if you cut the pins, it's going to be a pain in the butt to actually put a pin back there. You're probably going to have to use some wire or melt some of this this polycarbonate, put some wire there. It's gonna be a giant mess. So make sure you do continuity check. So basically you, ch you clip the legs. So now you've stopped the RGB signal coming from here to this plug. So now we're gonna use these cables here and we're gonna connect this to this connector. So here I have it wired all up, and while this wiring works out, this isn't the best wiring. Preferably you'd put it somewhere over here, or even over here. Basically what you, the aim is, is to have the, the shortest length cables possible. So basically what we've done is we've taken these three cables here, we've put them on the corresponding pins right here, and this is the important bit that I couldn't actually find online. So the pin out here, this is the output of this amplifier, is the same pinout as on the Genesis Gen 2. So basically we have red here, so that goes to this pin here, blue, so it goes to the second pin right here, and this one is green, and it goes to the pin next to the red right here. So all your RGB signal is all in the corner right here. Here is your C-Sync pin. So it's one pin for oh, uh, spacing away from your red signal. And I will provide a document 
down below to actually has a clearer image of exactly which pins are which. Well, that's how you pin out these cables here to this board. Now the next bit is audio. So I have the mod done here. And as you can see, we just added some wires here to the audio side. And you know, this isn't the, the cleanest way of doing this. So let me just go over the audio side of this modification real quick. So basically we just took off the caps here and we wired to the positive side of the top two and the negative side of the other ones. Now, what this does mean is that your audio jack here your headphone jack and all this audio amp and everything here is no longer going to work. It's, you're effectively just disconnecting it uh, because these two connectors on each side of here are actually connected to each other via the capacitor and resistor on the other side of the board. So by removing the cap, you know, you're disconnecting them. So it effectively disables this and it routes all the audio through this chip here, this mod chip here, and your audio cable here. And that's where if you want to have stereo out, replacing this connector is really the way to go. What I did here actually is route both the audio cables to the mono out here. So it's basically creating a mix of stereo through the mono. So it's not true stereo. If you wanted to keep the audio jack, you can just leave the capacitors or bridge the connections. Now, I'm not a sound engineer, so I can't tell you what's gonna end up with the cleanest sound because if you're, bridge if you're just leaving the caps, this is really noisy to begin with, and then you're getting the noise potentially to this chip, which is just, it's gonna filter it, but you're still gonna have noise in there. I, ca I can't really tell you what's the best way to do this. This is just the way to do it with the cleanest audio source because you're taking it directly from the sound chip, putting it through some audio filters and piping it back out. So this is probably the cleanest way as far as the audio is actually concerned. Now for powering this chip, I just went off the uh, CXA1145 here. So I used the VCC pin on this chip and the ground on this chip to power the mod chip. Now you could use the rectifiers so if you're using the rectifiers, you're using the middle pin and the furthest pin for the output. So your five volts. So you do need five volts. And if you're getting on the rectifiers, I wouldn't mount. I would either mount the ground on the ground on your plug here or the rectifier itself. I wouldn't mount it somewhere else on the board because these boards are known to be kind of dirty. So um, it might not be the best idea. It probably won't hurt anything but this is the way I did it, is I just brought it off of this CXA chip here. And this is pretty much the mod. So what you end up with is clean RGB out from here, a C-Sync signal from here, and mono out from here. Now this doesn't touch any of the composite, and you can, so you can still use your composite cables and everything like that. I hope this guide was helpful for someone. Like I said before, this is just kind of like a repackaging of information that I've been able to research about this. And 95% of this is not my information. So hope you enjoyed the video, it was helpful.